All right. Thank you so much, Debra, for joining us this morning on The Light Breakfast. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Have you been this MCO period? I heard you've been very, very busy. Um, so yes, I have been. Um, uh, since the start of the period, um, my nonprofit Fuji, we've um, actually been uh, coordinating and distributing food to a lot of communities in need. Um, primarily, we tend to work with the refugee community, as we have done for like the past 10 years. But uh, we realize obviously the need uh, cuts across different people, different communities. And so for us, it was really just uh, making sure that people who uh, needed food were able to, you know, have put food on their table. So we've been uh, working with um, the refugee community, but also uh, a lot of Malaysians um, and uh, migrant workers as well, and supporting a couple of children's homes. Yeah. Now, now let's rewind a little bit 10 years back. Like what inspired you to, to start Fuji School? Um. Yeah, I th uh, you know, I've always, I think for me, I've always been, and I remember this when I was like 14, 15, and you have to think about, okay, what am I going to study at university? And you're like, but I'm 15, I don't know what I want to do with my life. And your parents are like, come on, pick your subjects for your yeah. O-levels, A-levels. And, um, and even at that point, I, I still felt very passionate about, I think things that mattered to me were like justice, uh, or injustice rather, um, poverty, I was very drawn to those sort of global issues, right? If you want to call it that. And um, yeah, so I, even then when I had to decide like what I wanted to study for university, I was drawn to political science. Um, so it's something that I've studied and then I've always volunteered. I've always tried to put myself out there to, to, to kind of be on the ground, which I think is super important. Um, and it was really when I came back from university and um, kind of just was thinking about what do I really want to do? And, for me, it was either, do I work for UN? Would I like to do that? Or do I want to start my own thing? And, um, and specifically starting Fuji and working with the refugee community was, it was very much by chance. Um, it's funny how life works actually, because I was, when I took part in Miss World, part of the beauty with a purpose, um, as they call it, <laughs> involved doing a social project. And so I reached out to UNHCR, which is the refugee agency um, for some content. And then about, I think the, year, the next year, they contacted me saying, hey, we've got uh, a little documentary we, we want to film. Could you host it for us? And so that was my first encounter with um, a refugee family, um, you know, here in Malaysia. Um, and, and I think it was very special because very often, especially today, we read stuff in the newspapers, we're watching TV. We're, let's be honest, we're very desensitized when it comes to, the bad stuff happening in this world. We, we see it so often that we're like, meh, we'll just flick, flick channels, right? Yeah. So, and then and it's, a human na it's human nature for that to happen. But I think what's so important is before we judge and before we cast our opinions and assumptions, it's so important to be able to uh, um, meet the actual people we're going to talk about and, and, and have an opinion of. So, so that was for me, it was a very personal encounter. I, I interviewed four refugee families. I sat in their homes. Um, listen to their stories. Um, and I really walked away that day. I still remember it. I walked away. It was, I think it was early, the first half of the year in 2018. And I, I remember thinking to myself, like money is not going to solve this. I, I need to do something more. And, uh, and that's really when Fuji was born. Now speaking about like, schools, right? Yeah. Uh, Fuji school is a school for refugee children, but why, why was it important for you to aid these refugee children with education yeah um so my mum uh you know sp spent most of her, her working career in education my sister is a teacher um i think i was brought up with a very keen sense of the value of an education that um you know three girls and, and my younger sibling is a boy and my parents are very much it was very equal access it was you can do anything you want in life um but an education is a very uh, empowering tool um and it's also a privilege, huh? We, we talk about it like, oh my God, I don't want to go to school. But we forget, <laughs> that, we forget that it is a huge privilege in this world. Billions of people don't even get to think about an access, accessing, accessing school, let alone university. So that was kind of my, my internal sort of foundation with education. And I say this even now, it's investing in, a, in, in education that changes minds, it changes hearts, it changes behavior. Because you're teaching people how to be citizens in this world.
you know? And so I really believe that even as a country, it starts really with our system. The social problems we face today will not be fixed if we don't tackle it from kindergarten onwards. Mm. Um, and, so, and so with that, it's really access and opportunity. That's what Fuji is all about, access and opportunity um, to education, to skills, to jobs that will help you build a more meaningful life for yourself. You had the privilege of moderating a chat session with the former First Lady Michelle Obama and also actress Julia Roberts not too long ago. Yes. Tell us about <laughs> that experience. Oh my gosh. I like, I remember when I got the phone call and I was like, Bleh. and I, you know me, I'm quite like a, I'm quite a stable emotional. Yep. <laughs> I'm not one of those. And this was like, I was like, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> um, it felt quite surreal to be honest. Um, Cause like if they kept it very hush hush. So I didn't actually know what on earth was going on. Like no one even knew they were coming to Malaysia yep. for heaven's sake. Mm-hmm. So, so it was a couple of months before, I think it was early December. Um, but it was a couple of months before where we got on a call and then they said, oh, we'd like you to moderate. And I was, you know, very flattered. And of course, that's when all my, my demons started playing. Like, am I good enough? Like, why me? Oh my God. And, you know, um, but Julia Roberts was a, I mean, she was a, uh, when I was a kid, she was a favorite actress of mine. I love her smile, her energy on screen. Um, Michelle Obama is, you read her book and I say this with like my goosebumps are like, you know, hair standing up, but on stage with them, the energy is, it was like, you could feel it. You know, and her aura, Michelle Obama's aura is amazing. You feel that energy on stage. You feel it just emanate. If you could see it coming out of her and, and, and that's a special, that's her superpower. Yeah. Um, and, um, and she's, you know, what I love about her is that she's, she's lived it. She doesn't sit there preaching and talking about what's nice and good and happy. She's lived it and she's worked. She grew up up the way she worked what she's done she was everything and beyond before becoming first lady you know um and and now she continues to do amazing things and to share and inspire others so i think that's very special and it was a it was a huge privilege for me to to be able to to share the stage with them and also one of the things i i wrote on that was you know at the end of the day yes it was julia roberts and michelle obama and then who was i no one um in that sense but but three of us on the stage it we felt like three women and, and that's, you know, it wasn't me sitting there just interviewing them, but I was sharing my life too. And when you really sit there and you, you respect each other in that way, we all learn from each other. Yeah. It, it's not a function of privilege and who you are and da da da. It's just three women on stage having a chat. So you, you were saying that you would get good bits from other people and, and, you know, use it. Yeah. So what were some of the good bits that you got from, Michelle Obama, as well as Julia Roberts. One, one, that was one of the things that Michelle said. She's like, we forget to plan our joy. We look at our moms and they, they were like, uh, maybe our grandparents and that. They just worked and they did what they needed to do. They never yeah. thought about themselves. Um, and she kind of said, you know, to be good to others, you need to be good to yourself. So take time to plan and plan and in, plan your joy and, and enjoy it. Um, happiness is not something that is, uh, you can have it. You don't, it's not something that you need permission to have. Um, which I thought was really important as well. And, uh, and, she t- and they talk, uh, talk a little bit about imposter syndrome, which is kind of a new term okay. um, where you feel that you don't belong and society, culture, family, institution tells us that you don't have the right to sit at this table or you don't belong here. And, and, and you know, for her, that journey that she took getting over that and going, actually, you know what? I'm pretty good at what I do and I have the right to belong. And, and, you, and that comes with self-belief um, really believing in yourself. Um, yeah. And, and, and I think no matter who you are, where you are in life, the, the gift of being able to give to others is really precious as well. Um, and both of that, both of those ladies showcase that, you know, to let that the things to, to experience and live in this world, to feel what goes on, to feel what others feel and to be able to, to give of, of yourself to others.